it took, it definitely crushed a little bit of my spirit um, because, you know, especially towards the end there when I did give it my all and I really tried and I jumped out of my comfort zone. Um, I was told that it wasn't good enough. So why try? We made it to 2020. Bitch, we made it to 2020. I mean, we made it to the end of 2020. Nah, no, we didn't make it to 2020. Please don't take us back in time. None of us want to go back in time. None of us want to go back in time. We made it to the end of 2020. About to go into 2021. Like, um, what's the T? 2020, 2020, 2021. Okay, listen, guys, listen. I just want to say a couple of things before we bring Jenna on on the thingy. I know we do the... Okay, let's do this. Wait to get a badge. Okay, you guys are already getting them. Just wait. Wait to get a badge because I'll tell you when. Only because when you guys get a badge, I'm going to remind you guys at the end when you get a badge, I want you to put your question right underneath it just so I can just like stay organized. That's all. Oh, but listen, listen, this is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, your little nerd boy cutie reporting for duty, here to do the Lord's work. This is our final top model chat of 2020, and I am so excited. This has been an amazing week. We've had a week since last week, amazing, amazing live chats with these girls, can you girls hear me? Can you girls hear me? I just want to make sure you girls can hear me. You can hear me. You can hear me. You can hear me. We had amazing chat since last week. I'm McKee, Chris, who else do we have? We had, I don't know, Renee. We had some of everybody come through here, and it's just been, like, so freaking amazing. We've crossed one million views on YouTube. I am just blessed. I am filled with gratitude. I am filled with happiness. I am filled with love, and I appreciate you guys for being my new friends I've gotten in 2020, especially through these hard times that we've gone through, um, that something beautiful like this was able to be birthed. And it makes not only me happy, it makes all of you guys happy and clearly millions of people. <laughs> and today we're ending it with a bang, bang into the room with Jenna from Cycle 9 of America's Next Top Model Now. I didn't know that you girls loved her that freaking much, which I should have known because you have always placed her name in the comments. But the moment I, and she's the latest I've ever posted a flyer. And you guys flooded me out like God did Noah in the well. Flooded. Was it Noah or was it? No, it was Jonah who was on the well. Noah was on the ark. Noah on the up flooded me out. And now we have Jenna. So before I bring her on, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you when to get a badge only because this badge program is messed up. Yes, Mother Tyra, don't mess with our Wi-Fi. The badge program is kind of weird. What I don't know what Instagram is doing. So what I want you guys to do for me is if you want to participate in the badge Q&A situation, litigation, I want you to wait until the end so that as you're getting your badges, you can go ahead and put your question right underneath it. And then I don't have to be scrolling, looking, yeah, and I miss anybody. See, y'all, what y'all getting them? Y'all just, y'all, just, let me just bring Jenna on. I'm gonna ignore y'all. Y'all don't never listen to me. Last night, guys, let me see if I can get just one gobble swabble. It's so freaking good. Jenna! Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very clear. Oh my goodness, how are ya? 
I'm so good. Oh, my God, I'm, like, washed out from this window. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I was about to say, it is washing out, but it's fine. If that's the effect you want to go for. Um, hi. Wait, I don't know what I'm doing. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I almost left by accident. <laughs> How are you? I'm nervous. Listen, Jenna, <laughs> you are, like, a top model deity. Did you know this? A what? A top model deity. A deity? <laughs> No, you are a top model deity. You are, girl. <laughs> Thank you. The people are like, Justice for Jenna! Justice for Jenna! Um, wow. I mean, I... I, I yeah, I guess I kind of knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess... I mean, I guess I kind of knew that. Um, yeah, it's always... It's kind of weird hearing that, to be honest, because... Uh, well, we can get into it later. <laughs> okay listen i just want to thank you once again for agreeing to do this with me and i think this is so great that you're actually my last person i'm doing for 2020 like i feel like big shit you know i love it um i remember actually Ambrielle after she did her interview with you she texted me and she was like you should talk to him he's amazing oh um, thank you so i saw some people mention me uh in the, the comments on one of your posts and i was like eyeball emoji eyeball emoji yes i saw those eyes <laughs> turn around every night and I get a little bit lonely. turn around bright <laughs> listen i have a lot of questions for you and because because you are a fan favorite these girls were not going to be tearing up my dms my comment section saying you didn't ask her this question. Own home. You know, and that's what I be telling. I don't know what the hell you bitches be thinking you are. I am grown with a grown <laughs> with grown man organs. But we they're, they're a little bit right though. I'm doing this because I want to, not <laughs> they be you know they, Jenna, they be so right. <laughs> they be so right. Listen, for <laughs> months so much better, actually. It looks so much better. For months, I didn't want to put on headphones. Like, for months, I didn't want to put on headphones. Until, like, one day, they were like, I'll never put on headphones. And I put them in. They're like, oh, my God, you sound so much better. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> Damn, I hate it when they're right. They're, they're usually right. They're usually right. Okay, here we go. Okay. Tell us, how did you audition for Top Model? And why did you audition for Top Model? Okay, so don't get mad at me. Um, not you personally, but just in general, people out there. Um, I had never seen the show before. <laughs> my, I was in high school. My friend Sam was like, you should do this. And we decided to make a trip. You know, and when I was in high school, my sister was at NYU. Mm -hmm. um, and... So we were like, yeah, let's make a trip out of it. And so it was like me and a couple of my delinquent friends from high school. We all got like hammered the night before. I showed up late. It was like a big casting call. We just like stand in line. Oh my God, my friend Sophia is like, Matt drove you. Yeah, I don't remember that, Sophia, but I'm sure you're right. Um, hey, Sophia. <laughs> um, and I got in line. Um, kind of hung over and they just kept like calling my number over and over again um and then I got a call back after that first day and then um was extremely dramatic in my interview like I just t I talked about like every single childhood trauma I've ever had and they were like yes of course <laughs> we want you on television so um yeah I don't know I just got lucky I feel you bad because I wasn't one of those people that was like, I've been watching this. Uh, like, I was just right. like, oh, yeah, like, I'll go do it. Sounds cool. Um, and then I got there. I definitely never said that once I got there. I was like, oh, my God, of course, this is my passion. I love this because I didn't want to get, like, yelled at. Like, you don't even want this. You don't right. Want <laughs> like so. other people from your cycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you telling me, I just want to make sure I get it right. Yeah. You auditioned on a whim. You had never seen the show before. And you were interested in modeling or you were not? I was... I have, like, a 
weird um, oppositional defiant thing with my mother and my mother really wanted me to be a model and I was really resistant to that for a really long time. Um, but I think it did secretly appeal to me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for that backstory. You're welcome. So listen, we're going to jump into the questions. As I always tell everyone, if you don't like them, blame the bitches who commented and not me because these are their questions I pulled <laughs> from the comment sections, okay? I just won't answer the ones I don't like. No, 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 no Jenna, you can't do that now. No. <laughs> you have to tell me something. You got to tell me something. I'll tell you good. everything. I'm, op I'm an open book right now because I'm having a borderline manic episode. <laughs> really? No, I'm just really hyped up on caffeine. Oh, okay, good. I was going to say, no, I want you so relaxed. Okay, listen. No. So Stephanie Garrison is saying, hi, Jenna. How Hi. long did that casting cruise last? Any stories from that part that we did not see on TV? I, it felt like that cruise lasted a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be good. I know it already. A fucking nightmare. <laughs> there it is. There it is. First of all, cruises are terrible. Don't go on cruises. <laughs> Why would you eat from a buffet on a giant floating toilet in the ocean? <laughs> Cruises are trash. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. I was very excited to go on a cruise at the time. Mm. Um, everyone on the cruise was mad at us and yelling at us. Everyone. All the people that were there just to, like, be with their family and go on a cruise um, were, like, screaming like thanks for ruining my vacation at us because production kept like shutting down parts of the ship and like people couldn't access parts of the ship they wouldn't let people take pictures of us um yeah it was definitely not fun to be on that ship i think while we were filming um but yeah also can we talk about how fucking mean it was? Oh, can I curse? Oh, no, you can curse. Definitely. Okay. I love it. Can we talk about how fucking mean it was to make us, like, wave to the girl <laughs> that got, like, left? <laughs> I rewatched part of it recently, and, like, they literally had us on the fucking deck of the ship, like, waving at the girls that got left behind, but really they had to get back on the boat. <laughs> Just, like, be under the boat. The girl, those girls had to get back on the boat? Yeah, we didn't leave them in the Caribbean. You know what? You know, you think that's me? Fast forward a couple cycles where there's a group of girls who think they got in the house and there's another group of girls who thought they got eliminated and then they're like, ah -ha! Actually, the girls who were sending home, you're actually in the house and the girls who we just said got in the house, you're the ones who are going home. <laughs> Top model. That's diabolical. <laughs> Um, the Fedora's 93 wants to know, Jenna, you were on one of the first non-smoking cycles. How hard was that for you? I believe in one of the behind... Okay, I'll wait for that question. A lot of questions about you smoking and Tyra saying no more, no more smoking in this cycle, whatever, whatever. How was that? Um, quitting smoking sucks, uh, but I'm a professional, so it was fine. Oh, simple. Like, it was, I did it. It sucked. And um, I was very grumpy. Um, but what was I going to do? It was the rules. Mm -hmm. You know. I will tell you, though, in between LA and China, they did stick us in a hotel for a couple nights. And um, I, like, chain smoked on the patio of my <laughs> hotel, hotel room. You were going so, bananas. Yeah, and and it, and it was it was so funny because I had quit, so it's not even like I was addicted anymore. I think I was just like being defiant. I was like, "Fuck you, I'm gonna smoke." <laughs> Were there any other girls in the house who smoked? Yeah. Do you want to tell us who? Um, I think I don't think she'll care. Um, Sarah and I, when we first went into the house, were uh, sm we would take smoke breaks together a lot during casting too. Mm hmm. I don't think anyone else that I can remember. You know, something tells me there were a lot more smokers in there. They just weren't smoking nicotine. <laughs> That's probably true. 
They weren't smoking the nicotine. Well, we didn't smoke any weed there because I think we were afraid of getting in trouble. But you guys were filming in California, so it's, it was was it legal back then? It no. Oh, sorry. I know that you're like a baby, but no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, okay. it wasn't. The Fedora's 93 also wants to know, okay, be before I ask his question, did they really enforce non-smoking like you couldn't smoke at all? You know what? They never had to because I think, like, you know, all, all the girls were really good about putting the fear of God in me about, like, not crossing Tyra. I had never, like, seen anything about it, but they were all just, like, if she tells you not to do something, you don't fucking do it. You'll go home. Mm. So I just was like, oh, okay, I, I won't smoke. And then I didn't, um, especially not, like, with cameras on. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Did they really – you're fine. Did they really enforce you guys not smoking? Yeah. I mean, they didn't have to. Yeah, that gotcha. was the answer. They didn't have gotcha. to. We just didn't – we just stopped. As soon as she said – she was like, go home, smoke as much as you want. And, like, you know, we went home, had a couple cigarettes. I took the carton that I bought because I knew I was going to be away from home for months and, like, probably not have access to a place to, like, buy cigarettes. I bought a carton, <laughs> and it just sat in my suitcase for the rest of the time. Dang it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. The Fedora's 93. Jenna, again, I believe in one of those behind-the-scenes episodes, you chipped your tooth as well. What happened with that? Oh, uh, I didn't chip my tooth, actually. Um, I was swimming in the pool uh, with my eyes closed. And um, I misjudged the distance between <laughs> my face and the wall. And when I started going up, I scraped, like, my whole face. And, like, literally just the concrete in the pool, like, filed my tooth down. It just, like, scraped half my tooth off. Maybe it was a chip. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> did they offer to fix it? They did fix it. Yeah, it was really nice of them. Oh, that's and then, nice of them. Thank you, top model. And then years later, um, I got, like, blackout drunk at um, a stranger's <laughs> house and knocked the repair off on, like, the edge of their bathtub. Jenna, you like to drink. Not, yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I like to drink. Yeah, I went through, uh, like, I've talked about this before. Um, mm -hmm. I went through a really rough time with alcohol after Top Model for, like, a few years. Was um, it as a result of Top Model or something else? You know, who's to say? I would say I definitely would um, classify my experience with Top Model as traumatic. Um, not it wasn't just like a hundred percent traumatic experience, but it was definitely traumatic. And uh, I don't think I really started like processing some of that trauma because it felt it felt so silly to be like, oh yeah, I was on a TV show and it was traumatic. Um, it feels very silly to say out loud, I guess. And then um, so I didn't start saying it out loud until like the last couple of years. Gotcha. Um, and wh where are you now in that journey? I'm doing really well. It's it's um it's hard. I don't like to talk about sobriety like in public. Um, definitely, if people have questions about it, they can like DM me, and I'm always mm -hmm. like open to talking about it. Um, but just for people who like aren't struggling with that, it's just kind of not. I just don't like to talk about it publicly. You don't get it. Got it. Well, yeah. everyone is sending you a bunch of hugs and love and kisses oh, right now, right now down you. in the comment section, and I'm sending you love and hugs thank right you. now. No, you're so welcome, Hans. Um, Matthias25 is asking, was there really beef between Twiggy and Victoria? Was there beef? No. Well, let me just let me just say this, and obviously considering what I just talked about, I've done a lot of like looking at this experience from like a, an emotional standpoint. So I've just kind of like been evaluating it from that, but the relationship established between the judges and the contestants is not healthy. Mm. Um, I'll just say that. I, it shouldn't be like we're adults 
talking to other adults. I, of course, I understand, like, in the, um, in the context of a job interview or something like that, of course, you're going to be respectful. Um, but how it's really hard to go through week after week with these people kind of holding dominion over you and openly judging you and sometimes making comments that are really hurtful towards you. Um, and that was Victoria's experience. Like the comments she was getting were becoming more and more hurtful and she could feel herself being pigeonholed slowly. And I know you know about the production notes thing. Um, Tell us about them though. Um, I don't know a lot. I don't remember a lot. I just remember the setup. It was, a, it was basically a setup. It was like, here's this girl. She's from Yale. She's smarty pants. She doesn't want to be a model. She's like got to come out of her shell to be a model. Um, I don't know. Just like a very like she's all that vibe. Um, so, yeah, I think she just was really hurt by that and um it came out she it's it's just not realistic that's not what happened you don't go to get a job and someone goes like you know you don't get signed with an agency and then go to see a designer and the designer's like oh do you have a prickly personality or some dumb shit like that's not realistic that that's for tv which is also fine you gotta make your tv show i'm just saying she was hurt and she reacted and I think she was perfectly justified in that. Fair. Um, do you feel like editing was manipulative? Of course. <laughs> of course it was. What are some that's, instances that you that's saw? That's how reality TV works. Mm -hmm. what, what, what were like some of your instances in watching? You were like, that's not how it happened. Well, it's like using uh, sound bites from our talking head interviews that we, you know, you'll say something about one situation and then they'll just apply it to a different situation. Mm. Um, they'll make it see, they'll manipulate the nature of our relationships to one another. Like with Bianca and Heather, I think what gets lost in the Bianca and Heather relationship is that Bianca and Heather were so close that they were constantly like bickering like sisters. And so you see two people bickering like sisters, you presume that they're strangers to one another. And then you're like, well, that person's being mean to that person. When in reality, Bianca and Heather like shared a bed half the time. They were together. That's all what Bianca the time. told us. Yeah. They were together all the time. Dang it. Um, who was your favorite and least favorite judge? <laughs> Who's your favorite judge, Jenna? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm not doing that. Miss J was my favorite, I guess I'll say. He's, you know, every time I ask the people who's their favorite person. Like, because Miss J acts like a, a real human being. Miss J is not there to be like a character on TV. Mm. He's just, it's just who he is, is the he, character. He was the same on camera mm -hmm. as off camera. The character, right? Yeah. Who's your Who's your least favorite judge? These are the people asking. This isn't me. I will say. Can a guest judge count? <laughs> <laughs> we had who's left? It's Twiggy, Tyra, and Nigel. Um, I mean. The Twigs never bothered nobody, except for Victoria. I don't know. Twiggy was actually, like, kind of nasty sometimes. Was she? A little bit. She just, like, didn't... She, like, she took herself very seriously, I guess. Mm. I but, um, yeah, I mean, it's no secret that, like, Nigel and I aren't friends. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'll leave you alone. That's all for now. See how good that was? <laughs> See how easy that was? It's, a, it's okay. You just have to talk it out. Talk it out. Okay, 
Matthias twenty five is still asking, what did you think of your makeover? I loved it. You liked it. I loved it? it until I went home and uh, they just left me with this very expensive thing to do. Yikes! Like y it costs a lot of money to get hair extensions removed and thank god i found a lovely person back in my hometown who offered to do it for free um it took him two days why did it did take it him two days to take hair out of your head because we're talking about a small town salon which was like a very high-end salon and very nice but he didn't know he didn't have any information on like what the product was um and then when he did get that information, like, he was only be able to get, like, some of the stuff to remove it. So he had to do, like, half and half. And it, ugh, it was a nightmare. It was a how nightmare. Was, how was it in your head? Was it sewn in? No, they were, like, the beads. They're basically, like, melted in. So oh, are you, you're talking about the, um, the, um, I wonder, was, like, the little steel little thingies? Like, little metal like, clamps? They were, like, not metal. They were, like, plastic. Like, literally, they were, like, melted into my hair. He had to, like use a special solution that like broke down the plastic to like get it out of my hair i've never heard of any of that yeah, before and in my it life. Was, the the hair behind the extensions was starting to mat too it was it was a nightmare my hair was damaged for years but it looked cute no <laughs> no You know, just off the strength of what it seems like, incompetence in the hiring of hair people, doctors, nurses, where the fuck the name is, they need to see all of you guys like $2,000. Just off the strength of we hire people who didn't know what they were doing in your scalps. Because it's not I that just... they didn't know what they were doing. It was a very expensive like thing that a lot of people get done. It was that they sent me home without any instructions on how to get it removed. They sent me home with like a very, very expensive. I mean, either I would have to maintain it for a lot of money. And I was an 18 year old high school student, or I would have to get it removed for a lot of money. And we don't get paid. Yikes. Oh, Dominique Flower, during during casting week, excuse me, Tyra said Jenna was known as a biatch in high school, and Jenna said that, and I quote, "Girls do not like me." Mm -hmm. Why was that said? Because Jenna seems so sweet. Um, you know, it's kind of drilled into your head over and over and over again that if you don't make some kind of impression or um, kind of go along with creating a character out of yourself, then why will, why should you stay? And I think that I was getting groomed into this role early on. And so I just kind of took it and ran with it. Okay. Like this is kind of what, this is kind of like our impression of you. Mm -hmm. They would ask leading questions that made me realize that that was the impression of me. Mm -hmm. um, and I would lean into it because it was like, at a certain point, what is that? <laughs> Girl, I don't know. Can y'all stop? Girl, I live in Atlanta and it is New Year's Eve. The girls are out. That's why I'm, not, I'm staying my black ass right here on this couch. You hear, you, you hear this honking. You see how I try to keep a straight face? I was cussing them out in my brain. Thank you for recognizing me. Just do it out me. loud. Just do it out loud. Um, Let me no. raise my window. Can y'all shut up? I'm doing an interview. Let me talk to him. Let me talk. that damn honking. Let me talk to him. Ugh. Put me on speaker. Oh, hold on, I gotta take I gotta take my headphones out. <laughs> Ready? No, I'm I'm off of this gang bang and little rock shit. What you gotta say, Jenna? Say it. Shut the fuck up. Say it one more what time. What is my voice? Yet? Shut the fuck up. God damn it! We got stuff to do in here. Um, 
<laughs> what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, mm, oh, yeah. No. So I was, like, feeling very groomed into being a character. And then at a certain point, being on the show and, like, getting in the house becomes, like, the most important thing to you. Because mm -hmm. you're isolated. You have no phone. And everyone around you makes you makes it feel like it becomes more and more of a life or death situation. And also, like, I left school in the middle of the semester to go do this and I'm in high school I'm essentially dropped out like it just the stakes get higher and higher and especially as you're isolated and surrounded by people who are making the stakes feel higher and higher so yeah can I ask you this looking back on it do you think you were ready for the experience like based on where you were in life do you feel like you were prepared to like handle all of that and process it i wish that i had just gone to new york and gone to open calls instead gotcha gotcha what what was it about the top model experience that 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 made you take this stance like i just wish i just would have bypassed all all of this this tv stuff and just gone straight there and just did it this way oh because it uh it was um it was a little soul crushing you know the isolation the having i was too young i think a lot of people in that position um are like self-assured enough to be like whatever this i'm just on a tv show like this doesn't actually mean anything about me and like these things that people are saying about me aren't necessarily true and but i internalized those things i started to internalize the idea that like maybe i wasn't a nice person because nigel said it or like you know maybe my personality does suck maybe i don't know what i'm doing you know i did a lot of theater before i started before i went on top model um, I had plans to go to theater school. I stopped going to auditions after Top Model. I went on an audition when I moved to LA and I was so sick to my stomach the night before that I completely bombed it. Um, it really, really like damaged my ability to be vulnerable, which was already like a little bit <laughs> not great anyway. Um, it took, it definitely crushed a little bit of my spirit um, because, you know, especially towards the end there when I did give it my all and I really tried and I jumped out of my comfort zone, um, I was told that it wasn't good enough. So why try? That was the thing about, like, the last CoverGirl shoot. It was like, we don't like your attitude. We think that you are this. We think you're that. We think you're too cynical. We think you're too serious. Blah, 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 blah. Too sarcastic. So I go into the CoverGirl shoot. I laugh. I try to be playful. I smile. I step out of my comfort zone and do all these things that don't feel true to myself. But I do them anyway because I'm trying and I, I want to do a good job. Um, and then as soon as my like commercial whatever aired and they watched it they were like it looked like you were making fun of it the whole time and I was like I, I was doing what you asked me to do like I was smiling and laughing because you asked me to do that and then now that I'm smiling and la like what I just yeah it was rough it was rough okay I, I want to back out of it just you know a little <laughs> bit um, we will touch on it later, but I'm going to back out of it for now. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. It is appreciated. And the people are sending you so much love right now. And I know. It's so sweet. They're sending you a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of love right now. Um, I just want you to make sure, I just want to make sure that you feel it and you know it. Oh, um, yeah. That is crazy. And you know what? I think I think in just the realm of reality TV, people the people who create it forget that you're dealing with people like like Eugenia said in our chat. She said, like that was my real body on that Ricky runway on that thing. Like like I'm a real person. This is a real this is real feelings. This is everything is I'm not some object, you know? I think that's what gets lost in this is like I don't think there's any one person to blame. Like it's really easy to like villainize Tyra or whatever, but I think 
like the bigger issue is kind of the machine um, of reality TV um, because contestants, and I shouldn't say reality TV, I should say specifically competition reality TV because um, contestants on competition reality shows don't get paid. Whereas mm-hmm. like the Real Housewives get paid. Mm-hmm. That's why they stay. That's why they like humiliate themselves on a regular basis and then stay because they get paid. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't. And then not only are we not compensated for like the use of our bodies and our words and our personalities and whatever you want to do with what you film. Um, but then like we become just like another moving part in the machine And when the end goal is just to make something entertaining, the humanity part of that gets completely lost. Which can, you know, and that's a blow that can be softened with money. (laughs) Yeah. Because we did did put a lot of labor into that show. Yes. Hours. 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 Overnights. 3 a.m. Getting up at 3 a.m. And I just knew that, like, I just knew that you girls were getting, like, residual checks until I started talking to you. It was like, no, unless you went in, unless you made an appearance, like, as a special guest on another episode, and then you were, um, like, a, you were considered a special guest or talent. They're like, no, as long as you filled underneath that contestant, that contestant pool, you get nothing. You, nothing. you got nothing then, you get nothing now. No. And I think that is so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you got a per diem for food. <sighs> okay. Um, am I bumming everybody out? <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, I don't... No, you're not bumming us out. I think the the, the beauty about the this space that has been created here is um, it's a safe space for you girls to come here and just say whatever you want to say, whatever you want to say. I'm not going to judge you. My friends here that are watching are not going to judge you. Um, all of our interest is just getting the truth about something that we all love, you know, which is top model. Yeah. We, we, we're all fans of the show, but of course, with all like the recent developments and, you know, the different things here and there, there's just a bunch of questions that we just have. And as we talk more and more to different people and they reveal certain things, it's like, it, it just, it, it makes a lot of things make so much more sense, you know? Yeah. So no, you're not bumming us out. You're educating us. And we I'm are appreciating. Do, do you want to go get something right fast? I'm good. I have something here. You sure? Because I was going to take this time to eat some more of my pizza. I got my. <laughs> Evian, what is that? Sorry. My Evian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I came in my Christmas stocking. You're a grand girl. Yes. So Dominique Flower is asking, is it true that Ebony's elimination was filmed twice? I don't, I, not in front of me. You don't remember that part? Filmed twice. I like believe, what part? I believe if the people watching correct me, y'all know my memory is dog shit, but I believe someone told us when she quit, Tyra stopped, went to the side, talked to Ken Mock. It was like a, yes. a long break and then she came back and they resumed. Yeah, it wasn't filmed twice. It was interrupted. Mm-hmm. I think it was probably just like a logistical thing like what's the deal can we do one less episode or I felt really bad for me for Ambriel in that moment because she was like super in limbo like she didn't know like does this mean I'm staying does this mean I'm going like anyway it was weird I don't know why right now in this moment I just like felt a glimpse of like what she could have felt like and that could have Ambrielle probably was terrorized Ambrielle really went Ambrielle really went through it I think she felt so frustrated because her none of her criticisms were really that constructive Mm -hmm. and so she was just like okay you don't like it but like what can I do Mm -hmm. um Dominique Flower also wants to know is it true that Victoria asked the girls at panel to raise their hands if they thought she was rude, but none of them did. <laughs> That's some bad bitch shit. She turned around and she said, 
Okay, all of you guys, raise your hand if you think, oh my god, what did she say? If you think I am like pretentious or it was just all like adjectives that were used on the production notes. Like if you think I'm this, this or that. Victoria was an absolute Wait, angel. wait, wait. You're saying that Victoria used the adjectives that she found on the production note to let them know that I've seen this. That is, oh, I got to Where is Victoria? I must talk to her. That Dude, is, she's disappeared. I have tried. <laughs> Trust. That is some big boss shit. Victoria didn't give a single fuck. She was amazing. On your um, show, I'm going to stand and look you in your camera and turn around and use the words that you guys wrote about me on your production notes to let you know I know what is going on. Oh, that is genius. Yeah. Um, that didn't get included. A lot of stuff. A lot of times when people, like, said really boss-ass shit that, like, made – that didn't make everyone look great, it did, obviously did not get included in the show. What were some other moments – uh, just like parts of my elimination. Some of it did get shown. I was actually surprised, but just more, more of the same, like more of what I said. But I, oh, wait, just back to Victoria. Victoria is one of the people that I was really close with. And I will say like one of my <laughs> favorite things is that when she left, she left a note in my bed Aww. that just said, win this. It was really sweet. That is sweet. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria, wherever you are. She's an angel. She's somewhere studying, like, medieval weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to guillotine, chop the girls. Mm. Um, Louise is asking, Louise, and you know exactly who you are on YouTube. I want you to DM me, message me some sort of way, the pronunciation of your last name, because I want to pronounce it one day, but I just don't want to butcher it on live. Do that for me. But he's asking, how was it working on the Enrique Iglesias music video? And was Heather fainting as dramatic as they showed it on TV? I wasn't even there. Like, I feel like I knew that she fainted, but... It was hot. Everyone was overheating. She fainted. She got some water. Yeah. I mean, I guess... it. I mean, fainting is serious. We're glad that she was okay, but it was she was fine gotcha the music video experience was fun at first and then 12 hours later it was less fun <laughs> yikes yeah um Soli K wants to know do you think Celicia your cycle nine winner mm -hmm. was a was pre-selected I'm so sick of this question I don't I know. know. I, do, I refuse to speculate on that. I don't know. Okay, so... I don't know. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't know. I, okay. I, I also really do not care. That's the other thing. That's why it annoys the shit out of me. Because it's like, what fucking difference does it make? <laughs> really? I'm really curious. It doesn't make a difference... I, um, you know, every time we talk about Cycle 9 and we get on the topic of Celicia, I always like to reiterate that my inside tea of me knowing someone that used to actually work on this show. I want to know who it is. And I feel, I, like I, I feel like I kind of have an idea of who it is. I would never say his name in a public space because I love him I so I think I much. know who it is. I'm going to DM you. Yeah, DM me. DM because, me. Because I've, I've seen our mutual followers. Mmm. I mean, he, I mean, that person, he doesn't really care. But, you know, just for this, you know, I try to just, no, you know, fine. let him, li you know, let him live. Since but I think I know who it is. One of my bosses now. <laughs> but um, the tea that I got was that there was, there was great concern about her being a part of the show because of all of that. And, you know, they wanted, like, that's why you hear Tyra say, let's just put it all out there. You know, you were a part of this. You were a part of this. You did do this. But I'm not going to be leaning on you. You know, they tried... They try to do Here's things. Here's the thing. Here's oh, the thing. Yes, get it. Get it, Jenna. Salisha was a working model in Los Angeles. Working models in Los Angeles do shit like a fashion show on the Tyra show all 
the time. I'm sure that she also did some shit for some other talk shows. I'm sure she also was it that had like possibly worked with one of the photographers that we worked with before. Like, I'm sure she was an active working model busting her ass in Los Angeles at the time. It was only, it's not that unusual for her to have worked in the Tyra show before. And again, I appreciate that. I don't care. Also, like, think about applying to a job and, like, your experience includes doing something that had to do with that company before. Like, yeah, they want you. That makes sense. I don't care. Also. Have, did I mention that part? Period! <laughs> Period. Did you already tell us who you, who you were the closest to in the house? Who's I closest to? Um, you know, I got closer to different people as time went on so early on i was really close to sarah um sarah and kim and i were kind of really tight um and then and also bianca bianca and i were really like close early on too and i i still love her to death like she was so nice to me and yeah. Um, and Ambrielle. Ambrielle and I would, like, sit outside and, like, talk about boys and talk about college and talk about, like, you know, weird beauty treatments that I'd never heard of because I think she was, like, she went to the spa a lot and stuff. And, yeah, like, I don't know. It's weird because I was close to everyone at different times, you know? I mean, not to brag because I went all the way. So it's, like... <laughs> let him know it's just like I had a chance to get close with everyone you know what I mean beautiful no, that's beautiful I feel bad because Alicia and I never got close um because I definitely was feeling some resentment especially as like as things started closing in it was pretty clear that I was moving to the back of the line and she was always so excitable and I was definitely not that and I was just like oh this bitch you know and there was definitely some like jealousy and like resentment there um so you know her and I never got really close but afterwards I would say Salisha was one of the people that like actually rode hardest for me and Mm. helped me out all like very consistently um never snubbed me yeah really and, and actually it makes me really pissed off when everyone like talks shit about her and makes fun of her like I'm not the one. I'm not going to, like, agree with you on that. I don't think that's funny. My respect. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Raymond Siegfried. Now, I've, I've told y'all about these usernames. God damn it. Raymond. In Cycle 17, I felt like Bianca had a lot of issues with the other girls. Was she like that behind the scenes in Cycle 9? Say that again? Who? Um, Bianca was at least how it was presented. She was like the problem child of Cycle 9 where she was always getting into it with people. Was that really the case? Like, was she really this 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 um, this um witch on earth? Now, I've spoken to her and, you know, her and I've had her chats, but I would love to know your perspective on it, which you've kind of already told us, but... Bianca's just, like, loud. <laughs> She's not... She was also 18, so... And so was I. I was horrible at 18. I was horrible. I was a rotten person. I'm actually really glad, like... I'm sure I said some rotten shit that didn't (laughs) make it because it wasn't good for the narrative. I'm sure. Um, Bianca Bianca would gas you up. Bianca Mm. would gas anybody up. Bianca would gas someone up that she didn't even like that much, to be honest. If they were, like, in a corner crying... (laughs) Um, when it really comes down to it, you know, she's not a heartless bitch. She's just loud. And she is, um, if she doesn't like someone, she doesn't like them. If she doesn't like something you do, she'll tell you. Mm -hmm. She was young, loud from New York. Yeah. I was loud too. (laughs) And very annoying. I was so annoying. If you look at like the clips episode where I'm just acting like a maniac, that's (laughs) how I was all the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So, Matt just will. Okay, here we go. 
Was mm-hmm. Nigel really that bothered by her sarcastic remarks or was that just played up by production? You were just being yourself and Nigel seemed so butthurt over that one comment they aired during the top five photo shoot. Love you, Jenna, the true winner of Cycle 9. Thank you. Um, I don't know. That's a question for him. <laughs> I was starting by then to get really irritated with this weird um, cult around the uh, judges. And I think also it had to do with just with the fact that they were really starting to impress upon me like what I was like. And um, it was like, we were supposed to feel this thing that was, oh, Nigel's taking your picture. So this is gonna be different than any other photo shoot so far. And it's like, why? <laughs> yes. I'm gonna be worse at modeling because Nigel's taking the picture. No, <laughs> Jenna. Jenna, do you fight or like not? Do you fight? Have you fought? Like, <laughs> I really do feel like I really do feel like you don't mind hitting the bitch in her mouth first. I used to fight. I don't fight anymore. That's good. That's good. But I, I see, I got that from you. Back to Nigel. I just got that from you. Like, girl, you don't even have to hit me. You uh, bomb. You're done. <laughs> I, I don't fight for no reason. I and I can see that, and I, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Yeah, like if you for sure, if you fuck with someone I love, you're not like leaving the room. Demolished. Yeah. Vanquished. Yeah. No. Eradicate it. But I'm just like, if someone's just acting dumb, I'm like, oh, that's a bummer for you that you're like, <laughs> my goodness, I am in heaven right now. <laughs> so, so was he really that offended? Like, not saying like, did he really feel offended, but from what you can see on about like what he was giving off towards you, was he really offended? Like, like, did it really bother him? Did he show that, he it, that like, it bothered him? I just think. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is true. And this might be like a totally unfair characterization because he could be like a perfectly nice man. Um, but he was just like boring and um, cocky. So I just didn't understand why he showed up and he was like, okay, just so you know, ladies, I don't want you to be intimidated because I know it's me and I'm a judge. And I guess that's like a perfectly valid sentiment, but I was just like, I don't know. Maybe I was just in a mood. I was like, who cares? <laughs> 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 that I was is also funny. like here's the thing is I would show up to set and they would have um, craft services and I would get absolutely jacked on Red Bull during hair and makeup mm-hmm. and did you crash? no but like I would just be out of control and just say whatever was on my mind because we're just sitting still a lot just like a lot of waiting around so I would just be like hurry up and wait yeah so yeah so sometimes I would get like super jacked up on on Red Bull and just like (laughs) say dumb shit (laughs) you you know what I'm more mad about from that shoot is them making it seem like I was being loud in the background when in reality it was actually the crew that was being loud in the background and that's who Nigel was yelling at and they just were like editing, like splicing it between me talking. And I, when he told us to be quiet, I was quiet. It was the crew that kept making noise. And then they were just making it out to seem like, I noticed how they didn't say anything else after about it either, because it wasn't us. Oh. Um, Mac, Mac Ibs is asking, you and Chantel seem very close throughout the season. Was it shocking to have her say your name as the weakest during panel? Um, Chantal and I were very close, especially towards the end. Um, there was one night... Well, actually, no. She's a mother. Um, so... <laughs> no, no, we, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> there was one night where we, like, her and I, like, um, hid behind a couch from the cameras and got tipsy. And was- <laughs> Jenna, I don't know why you was. I don't know why in my brain I thought you were gonna say something in the vein of one night at band camp. I was uh, gonna pass that out. That did happen. The- that did happen, but not with any other girls. Um. Anyway, 
Oh my god, I should not have said that. Anyway, no, you, no, no, but this is um, the place. But this is the place you say it at, <laughs> Jenna. What happened? What one night at band camp? Please. Um, I had a, a crush on someone that I saw that I met during filming, and then when filming was over, we met up. Oh, okay, that's fine. It was chill. It was while I was sharing a room with Bianca, though, so she was very annoyed with me. <laughs> oh. It was in China, and Bianca was like, can you fucking not? Because <laughs> we were, like, smoking in the corner, trying to smoke out the win window, and Bianca was like, can you guys stop smoking? <laughs> oh, what, you, and, you and the... Was it a guy, or... It was a woman. Oh! <laughs> yes, Jenna! I love this. This is beautiful. Um, this is yeah. beautiful. It was actually nice. It was, like, nice to, like, kind of hang out with someone not, you know, part of the show, like, at the end and kind of close out China. You needed a, a break. Way. Okay. I needed see. a break. I had, you know, I, I, like, she showed, you know. Can I ask you this one question? Years? And then I'm, 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 I'll leave you alone. Did you guys, like, kiss? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, all right. Back um, to the question about Chantal saying you were the weakest at panel. <laughs> okay, so the thing, okay, the thing that hurt me the most about that was that we were so close, and she knew how much my relationship with my sisters was important to me, and it wasn't so much. You had to say someone, like you had to say someone, and both Chantal and Celicia took cues from the various panels of judging, of saying like, "Oh, um." this is what we don't like about you. And they kind of jumped on that information and used it to explain why I shouldn't be there. And the whole thing about saying that, like, they wouldn't want their little sisters looking up to me cut me to the core deeply. I was so hurt by that because my relationship with my sisters was really important to me and still is. I could, I could, just, I could just tell that, yeah, you know... As much as we like that top, I thought someone's stray dog was walking outside. I was like, oh my God, someone go get the dog. It's a cat. So they're smart enough. But like, I could just tell they were like effing with you towards the end of that whole situation. And it was like, why are y'all bothering Jenna? Like, why are y'all bothering her? Um, it was like, I was the weakest link. And it was like, but you weren't. Every, it was every man for himself. It was like crabs in a bucket. But the, I hope you understand the overwhelming opinion of people who watch is that you were not the weakest link. You actually were the strongest link. I was the weakest link as far as, like, a lion had already taken a bite out of my back leg. I was limping. And so they pounced, you know. Gotcha. There were three of us. Two of us were coming out of that room. The judges already didn't like me. Gotcha. I, I mean, strategy-wise and competition and war and all the other stuff, I mean, it makes sense. It yeah, makes it, sense. Was, it was um, It was tough because I really was, like, the only reason I said Chantal was literally just because, like, I was going off of uh, portfolio feedback just overall of the three of us. She had had, at the time, the most, like, like, eh. And not very many, but, like, there were a few judging, like, panels where she didn't do that well. Mm hmm And same for me, too. I'm just saying, like, between the two of them, it was her. But I didn't attack anyone's personality, so that's why I was really hurt by that. Gotcha. I would never have said, like, I think she's a bad person, I think she's mean. Yeah. That makes and to be fair, neither of them are. They're both very nice people, so I couldn't really say that. Right. Dang it. Um, Bobby, Rob, I'm sorry, Robbie Belt is asking, can you ask her how she felt when they had her get so, okay, this is one of my moments in Top Model where I, like, I hate the show for, like, five minutes. Um. They, at, I'm going to read this question. Can you ask her how she felt when they, when they had her get so vulnerable in front of them at panel and then eliminated her right after that was messed up. Yeah. Exploitation! Yeah. 
the worst is um they didn't show this on TV, but they made me apologize to Chantal and Salisha at panel. <laughs> did they make them apo- did they make them apologize to you? So not only did they... I actually truly don't know what the apology was for. I don't. I think it was just like general. I guess I had an attitude. I was really angry. Um, when I said the spewing rainbows thing, it was kind of a dig at Salisha, but it was like in defense of what she had said about me, that I was like a bad role model. Again, this is like 18 year old, like petty shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm not angry at Salisha and I'm not angry at Chantal. I was and really hurt at the time. Everyone, do you hear that? This is 18 year old girl petty things. Eight, I bet if I went live with some of you bitches shit. and asked y'all what y'all was doing at 18 years old. Yeah, I was 18. <laughs> they were like, just, they were, you know, barely 20. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when I was like, well, I don't need to be like this and I don't need to, and I was kind of comparing myself to that. And I think that when I said that, like, spewing rainbows thing, they were basically like, well, that was a mean thing to say about your fellow contestants, so you owe them an apology. Yikes. Yeah. That wasn't right. And it was actually ultra horrifying because I did it once. I, like, turned or halfway around to apologize, and then they made me do it again because it didn't look right on camera. And I guess I didn't get a good shot of it at all because they didn't use <laughs> Yes. I can't wait for this to be immortalized on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, you... Please, please start to go fund me for when I get sued by whoever's left. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, Jenna, trust me. Trust me. Everything that you're saying right now, trust me. Everything that you, you think you're saying is bad. I've had girls come on here and say things even worse. Oh, okay, good. Yes, listen, I've had girls say Tyra was constipated, she was shitty. I've had girls say if they saw her in the street, they will bust her in her mouth. Okay, I've well, had ridiculous. girls say they don't. I've had girls say something. So trust me, everything you're saying right now is you're in a safe zone, mama. That NDA has expired a long time ago. No one's suing you. Trust me. And you yeah. know what? I think secretly, I think they actually may enjoy these types of conversations because it keeps their show relevant, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're fine. Trust me. Trust me, Jenny. You're fine. And you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. You are entertaining everyone Let's right never now. stop. Let's do this all night. Let's count down to the new year together. Oh! <laughs> yelling at people outside the window. Tell them to shut the fuck up! <laughs> Squirtle 101. Okay, I'm ready to get up out of this. I'm about to start deleting some of y'all questions because I feel like she's answered some of these, but um, I'll ask. What do your sisters think of Tyra, of what Tyra was saying about you being a role model? Do you think that Tyra was using your family situation and um, exploiting it to break you down to make you weaker versus Alicia? I'm more interested to, to hear what your sisters thought when they saw that. My mom was really mad at me. Um, I know you're not asking me about my mom, but my mom was actually really mad at me for bringing up the fact that I grew up in a single parent household and had to like help raise my sisters. Um, oh my God, my friend, sorry. My friend Jesse just commented if I can confirm that I had a crush on Gerard Butler because I almost hooked up with him one night when I lived in New York um, and I no longer have a crush on him. Thank you, Jesse, for that question. Who, um, who Gerard, who? Gerard Butler. Um, Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, my mom was, like, really bummed out. My mom um, thought that I was, like, kind of calling her a bad mother. Gerard Butler? (laughs) This was, like, right after 300, so he was still hot. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, yeah, girl. I would have, girl, yeah, I would have, I would have yeah. slid, I would have slid on the sword, too. <laughs> no, yeah. It was, like, 2008. It was hot. He, I should have gone, I should have gone back to his apartment with him, but I did not. Anyway. This is for Sparta, whoop! <laughs> oh, 100%. Just kick me onto the bed. Um. Oh, so, no. So, <laughs> my, hi, honey, to my husband watching this. Um, so, yeah, my mom was bummed out. 
my mom and I have a complicated relationship. My sisters didn't really say anything. They were really young at the time. I think that they just didn't, uh, I don't know. They didn't really, I don't really remember. I don't really think they cared. I think they were like, they see me as a role model. They still do. Both my sisters are platinum blonde right now. Nice. Because they copied me. Because I'm a good influence. <laughs> so you girls are like those girls from, are, are, are you an X-Men fan? No. So on so in X Men they have these um group of sisters. I think it's like four or five of them. I think it's maybe four or five. Where they're called yeah. the, they're called the Cuckoo Sisters, and they're all like telepaths, but they're all um blonde. Mm. Mm -hmm. We all have very different. Um, we my, my sisters and I don't like look that much alike. But we all have like very different skin tones and stuff. Gotcha. So we all rock the blonde in different ways. We don't really gotcha. look like triplets, but mm -hmm. um. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what to say about that. Um, I will say that Tyra did try to exploit my relationship with my mother um, later um, on her show. She asked me to be on her show with my mom, and I said I would come on the show, but I would not come on with my mom because I didn't want to air my family's dirty laundry on the show. Um, and then they uninvited me from the show. Smart move. Smart yeah, move, just, smart move. Smart move on your end for. for I don't want my family's that, business you know. on national television like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Louise is also asking: Can you talk about the final runway? Did you get to participate in it? Yeah, I did. How was it for you? We all did. I don't remember, honestly. It was it went by so fast. Did it? Yeah, we just um we only walked in part of it. Um we didn't see the girls walk, actually. Oh. The last two. Yeah. But everyone who was in China was in it. You guys all know that. That's like an open secret, the details. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes when I do ask the girls this question, I do get a little shocked when they're like, no, we actually, I didn't go or I was gone or, you know, something happened. So, yeah, I don't know. I, think I don't want these girls, girls tearing me up. Later. I mm -hmm. think some girls go home early. I think it depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think probably there's probably people who get eliminated and they're like, why the fuck should I stay here and keep working on your show? Like Victoria from Cycle 19, she said, bitch, send me home. Yeah. They want you to stay because if they send you home too early, then, you know, all your loved ones who knew you went to go be on the show would know where you mm -hmm. placed. Mm -hmm. And so they want to keep you for as long as possible. But I, I always thought about that. Like, when you go back home, how would they know when everyone else went back home? Like, you could just be coming back home because it's done and not because you got, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Lady underscore males. Love Jenna. I heard from Jay's chats that production had a hard time filming the show when you guys went to China. Did Jenna notice production struggling or did she experience any difficulties herself? China was hard. Um, they didn't like us to have um, cameras in public places. You know, they're like really, they really like try to control um, media that comes mm -hmm. out of China. So... That was difficult, I think, for them, just from what I saw. Um, it was also difficult for us to film, especially in Shanghai, because we would get mobbed by people just, like, staring at us um, and taking pictures of us. I would say it was especially difficult for the Black folks um, that were working on the show and on the show because um, there's a lot of, like, not a lot of uh, Black folks in China, so um, a lot of objectification with that. Um, yeah. So it was like, it was intense sometimes. Dang. It's not really. Um, I wouldn't characterize like, it was just weird because it was like a very touristy city. Beijing was mm -hmm. much easier. Beijing, gotcha. people were very chill. People would stop and look. Um, people would, you know, be like, oh, that's cool. There's, like, filming something over there. But, like, um, I would say, like, Shanghai was, like, much more.
So um, a lot of objectification with that. Um, yeah. So it was like, it was intense sometimes. Dang. It's mm. not really. Um, I wouldn't characterize like, it was just weird because it was like a very touristy city. Beijing was mm -hmm. much easier. Beijing, gotcha. people were very chill. People would stop and look. Um, people would, you know, be like, oh, that's cool. There's like filming something over there. But like, um, I would say like Shanghai was like much more difficult. It was just a lot of like, um, and I just want to be really careful not to be like, oh, this is what Chinese people are like. I just want to be like, this, no, there was a it. huge difference between the two cities. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just like, it was like a very big, yeah, culture shock kind of. Um, Tamina Doy Flotondo wants to know, ask her why she didn't pursue modeling after the show. Why I didn't pursue modeling after the show? Mm -hmm. Um, I did. Um, okay. Lazily. <laughs> I did not, I'm not like how Bianca is, like, Bianca hustles so hard. Um... I just, like, didn't do that. And, again, like, um, I had a really difficult time after the show. Mm -hmm. um, and so that interfered a lot. When I started drinking, I started getting weight. Um, and then that, like, kind of turned into, like, a cyclical thing. Um, and I did work here and there. I found the fashion industry to be sometimes completely horrifying. Um, mm. and this is just like my personal experience. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I it went, I went back and forth. I just, for a while, I really wanted to get away from it. And I got really frustrated because it was like, I did the show and even like my family members were a part of it. Why aren't you modeling? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And it's like, because I did the show, because I was good at something, I had to do it. And if I didn't do it, I was a failure. Mm -hmm. And I, and again, like, keep internalizing this feedback and it just gets, it compounds and it makes the feel of failure greater. So it makes, like, the motivation to put myself out there lower. Um, but I actually did, I've been doing a lot of modeling lately. Because I think especially since, like, really finding my voice and being able to, like, you know, create strong boundaries and knowing exactly what kind of people I want to work with and what kind of, like, campaigns or, like, um, brands I want to work with, um, I'm able to really enjoy the work. Oh, that and I have to so say that the beautiful. Last, yeah, the last two campaigns I did were both for non-fashion entities. Um, they were, like, lifestyle uh, brands and so one was like a furniture slash lifestyle company that did have some clothing and then another one was um, a textile company um, and both were like beautiful fun artistic shoots that I had a great time on um, and so I just want to do more of that kind of work if I'm going to model and then otherwise um, you know it's not my end career goal gotcha gotcha but that's that's beautiful to hear that um, you say that you found your voice and you're able to place boundaries and you know what type of things that you want to do and you, and you don't want to do and you're okay with that like that's that's be that's beautiful that is so beautiful and i'm proud of you and i congratulate you for doing that thank you yeah someone said i should share it on my instagram i have been sharing those pictures on my instagram so follow her right now bitches when but listen look at it. so listen so you 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 know you were having a very vulnerable moment with us and these bitches in the comments were carrying on and I kept, I kept, I kept seeing like, hey, all of you look at the comments. I'm like, okay, what are y'all saying? Is there a booger in my nose? They were like, did the people in Ch did the people in China recognize Dora the Explorer? <laughs> oh my god, I'm not, I'm not addressing that. I'm not addressing that. That is so not fair. I didn't realize. And I'm showing my age here, but when when Cycle Nine was on, I probably was in the. 
I don't think I was even in high school yet. Like I was even like I was somewhere in like probably just getting into middle school, maybe somewhere. So I didn't realize her bad her haircut was until many years later. Now and people like drag her for that, <laughs> which, which, which had nothing to do with her. Like that's not fair. It's weird because she's. The, I feel like she's the only person that's had like a bad makeover that she gets dragged instead of the makeover itself. That's what bothers me. Well, because people don't like, want to like Celicia. That's why are you is. mean to her? Because she, they put a wig on her head that she didn't like, that she complained about a lot. And tolerate it anyway, because she's a good sport and a professional. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say this right now for for Celicia, who's not here right now. She did not decide to put that wig on her head. They chose it. She yeah. did not choose to have modeling experience and to be a working model and all those other things. And then she that she couldn't that. She couldn't help it. She, she literally went on the show and then tried her hardest to win and then won, and you're all mad at her about it. What the fuck is that? Leave Celicia alone. Leave her alone. She did what she was supposed to do. Like, what? Why? I don't understand that. I really don't. I really don't. Why are you mad at her? She did what I, she was supposed to do. If anyone had any reason to be mad at her, it is for that one incident of her saying something kind of mean to me, and I got the fuck over it. So why are you on it? Leave it alone. She didn't cast herself. She didn't cast herself? She didn't she cast didn't, herself. She didn't even want to go on the show. Oh, wait. What happened? She, like, was cast, and then she was like, oh, I don't know, because, you know, I'm trying to, like, really build my career, and... You know, I don't know how well it'll look on my resume if I'm on this reality show because sometimes people don't look at it. You know, she was like really unsure. So she didn't even want to originally be on the show necessarily. She had a lot of reservations about it. And then she went in and gave it her all. So. And this is coming from Tom Model Deity Jenna herself. So stop <laughs> with the stop with the Salisha I'm stuff. just saying you talk shit into the internet ether all you want about Salisha. I'm not gonna participate in it. I want nothing to do with it. Leave me out of it. Boom. Salisha saw me at a pizza restaurant in Los Angeles when I first moved here like eight years ago and I looked like shit and my face was swollen and I was hungover and she was like, Hey, um, do you wanna meet this agent? <laughs> Here's the address and just drink a lot of water and eat clean until you go see him. Like that's my friend. And with that, um, were you contacted to be on all stars? No. Okay. I think that I burned a bridge there a bit with Tyra after not agreeing to be on her show with my mom or maybe before that. I don't know. Mm. Did you get a sense of you? Did you get a sense that she was upset with you when you said you didn't want to bring your mom to her show? Hang on, my, my phone just told me it's dying, so I just take my head out. Um, oh no, you're fine. Did I get a sense what? Did Did you get a sense that she was upset with you? I mean, how could I? And talk to her. Gotcha. So, so you're just thinking you telling them no, I'm not bringing my mom on affected potentially could have affected them asking you to be on all stars i just think like i for sure was a fan favorite and i just like i don't know i guess i'm kind of surprised i wasn't asked to be honest would you have done it maybe i'm just being cocky i don't know would you have done it yeah probably Mm, probably maybe probably (laughs) (laughs) i would do it now i would do it now it depends on like where i was at in my life I got you. So, so Azure Phoenix is asking, how do you feel about the legacy that a and has had over the years? And how does it feel knowing you are one of the most popular contestants on your cycle? How do I feel knowing that? Mm-hmm. I feel good. It's a lot of pressure. How do you feel? How do you feel? Um about how Top Model has aged. I'm going to be really honest. I haven't watched a single episode since mine aired. Oh, well. I mean, I know I hear things through the grapevine. Like, I knew they added boys. I knew that there were, like, more out queer contestants as time went on. I knew that there's been at least one trans contestant. So that's all great. Um, 
I think, yeah, I don't think my season aged well. I think a lot of the old seasons didn't age well. None of it ages well, to be quite honest with you. No. It's like, girl, as time goes on, it's just, it just gets dragged more and more and more and more. But, you know, they did the best with what they had. I would, it is my, it is my hope and my prayer that they try to do the best with what they had. Um, yeah. And that best was trying to do right. Yeah. Okay, last question before I open it up to everybody else. David O'Leary. It's saying, Jenna, on your Instagram, you have gender queer pronouns, but mm-hmm. this wasn't mentioned on the show. And I've noticed a lot of ANTM contestants are since now openly queer. Do you think it was a case of lots of contestants not being out yet, or did the show not create a good environment for contestants to be open? Um, I think that at 18, I knew I was gender queer, but I didn't have those words for it. Um... I just was kind of living that way. Um, I was definitely openly queer. I actually talked about being queer in the house. Um, there were other queer people in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I I was not secretive about that. Uh, it just didn't air, which is fine. Gotcha. I also had a. I was also uh, in like I was in a relationship with a boy at the time. A terrible boy, but I was in a relationship with a boy at the time. Um, they're all terrible so yeah <laughs> um, yeah I don't know it just didn't come up but I was open I was out I've been out since you know I was really young. I remember the first time I ever had a girlfriend my mom like I didn't, I didn't even have to come out my mom was just like is that your girlfriend and I was like shut up <laughs> <laughs> go away mom yes I freaking love it okay Listen, everybody. So I'm done with all of my questions for Jenna. And Jenna, you did an amazing, 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 amazing five-star job. Listen, Mm -hmm. now is the time for you guys to get your badges. And as you're getting your badges, if you want to participate in the Q&A, get your badge and then put your question right underneath it so that I can stay as organized as possible. Because I've told you guys, I get anxiety when I have to go back and forth and do all those things. I'm not that talented. Someone said, I thought she said she has a husband. I do have a husband. What is? What are you trying to say? What does that have to do with anything? Not a damn thing. Okay. <laughs> Edward underscore Archibald. I see you got a badge. I'm now looking for your question. Let me shout out the people who got them. So I can just get their their um their um their names in my in my head. Edward underscore Archibald. Charlie underscore O. All Al Bracken. Al Brecken Photography, um, Landmade, Hamadi, and Essie underscore Marcuco. 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 I don't know if I'm saying that right, but yeah. All right, here we go. Jenna, how you feeling over there, girl? I'm sweating. Are you really? I'm just like, I think I blacked out. I, I have no idea what I've said so far. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is really nerve wracking. It just like you have to understand how understand. you have to understand how like railed into us it was that we like could not have these types of conversations so much so that like I just lived in fear for for years. For years. For years. I had a I had a producer like call me and leave like a really mean message on my my voicemail once because they heard that I was like giving away show secrets and I hadn't yet <laughs> well next time they call you just just give them my number and tell I mean, them it was me. like 12 years ago it was like right after the show aired but yeah was... yeah they don't they don't care now so uh, um i just had it give me one second i just saw it just saw it i have my finger on yes so edward underscore archibald wants to know happy new year's oliver and jenna mm. jenna love <laughs> jenna Love your photos. Which one was your favorite photo shoot? And what's the best out of your experience on Top Model? Great question. I like that. Which shoot was my favorite? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably... mm, Wait, let me get my portfolio out that I I dug out of the storage. Your actual portfolio? Yes, babe. You are the first girl who actually is showing us her actual... Can you flip through each... (gasps) 
This is history right I now, gave, Jenna. I gave a couple of these away, so. The photos? Yeah, um, as gifts. Like, my downstairs neighbor, Michael, has my moss picture on his fridge. <laughs> oh, wow, that is so beautiful. Yeah. I do like that car one. Oh, this was cute, too. That was a good one for you. I liked that one. Yeah. Um... I would say, what's my favorite? What was my favorite shoot? I think, I think the desert burning car photo shoot was probably my favorite. Literally, oh, actually, the rock climbing one was really fun too because I got to like um, rig myself in because I was rock. I like did professional rock climbing at the time. Like I was a instructor. Oh, nice! Um, so I got to like tie myself into my harness and everything. I was like, I got this. Don't worry about it. I'm Move back, bitches! I was all over that wall. So. Torin W wants to know who did she think would be in the top three when she first saw her competition in the house? What was her fave? You already talked about your fave and least favorite um, photos. So, so who did you think would make it to the end? Um, who did I think was, would make it to the end? Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it... I I didn't really have an idea of how it was going to go. I I definitely knew who was getting in the house. I wasn't surprised by any of the choices of people that were getting in the house. Um I think that it was a week to week thing and every time a girl got eliminated, we knew after panel but before she got eliminated. Like during deliberation, there was always like one girl in the corner like we all, she knew we knew we all knew like when you were going home you knew it was more clear to us after panel than it is when they show it on tv gotcha damn but i would say i'd never i was always surprised there you know like i could not say on day one in the house these are going to be the final three i just couldn't i couldn't have done that i was i kept getting shocked that i kept making it mm -hmm. so I think the strongest portfolios from your cycle are you. Heather had an amazing portfolio, and I can't believe I haven't said her name yet, but Lisa Jackson had a stellar top model cycle nine portfolio. I love Lisa. Yeah, Lisa was bomb as fuck. Lisa was the shit. Yeah, still is. Still is. Oh my god. Text her, let her know I want to talk to her, because we gotta get into some things. You know, we're not in contact. Um, oh shit. She's busy. I've I've DM'd her a couple times and like she didn't even leave me on scene. Like I think that she just she's busy. <laughs> yeah, she's busy. I don't even think she saw it. Damn. Um, but I do love her from afar. Mwah. Hamadi underscore the hottie. Uh, the underscore hottie. Jenna, has anyone told you you look like Jerry Ryan? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is too. Should I look them up right now? Yeah, because I'm okay. I'm on my phone. Uh oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, she's she's pretty, but I don't see her. I don't I don't see her. It's fine. Okay, moving thank you guys. On. Right, definitely moving on. We have stuff to talk. About. I'm just making sure I got everyone that I'm not leaving anyone out. Da -da -da, I'm going through you guys' question, checking the badges, going through you guys' question, checking the badges. Yeah, I think I'm going to start doing this on um, YouTube because it's so much easier for me to do this, this check-in system process. Okay. Jenna, are you feeling good over there, though? Right now? Yes. Overall. I'm just letting it go. I'm letting it ride. I'm I'm going moment to moment right now. You've done such a great job. Thank like you. I, I know this is going to be one that everyone really, 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 really enjoys. I hope so. Mm. Mm, have you spoken to Heather? I've seen her at events and stuff. We when were really the last close. time you saw her. We weren't really that close. Um, 
I don't know. I think the last time I saw her was a few years ago, like at an event. Miss, Miss, Miss Heather. Miss Heather, Miss Heather, Miss Heather, Miss Heather. Yes, ma'am, Heather. Y'all terrorized Heather. Okay, I don't see the people who got bad just <laughs> asking questions, so. We terrorized her? No, she's fine. Well, I mean, no, okay, let me correct myself. Let me do my, let me d say that better. Now that I've talked to you, Ambriel and Bianca, I understand more. We all understand more what the dynamic was. It's just what it looked like on the show. It looked as if you girls were terrorizing her. But now that we know that wasn't the case, then we should all let it go. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I so, don't think I don't think we I I don't know I, I honestly I wasn't there for everything so I can't definitively say like whether or not there was any of that going on but I didn't participate in it if there was Al Bracken Photography is asking how did agencies feel about you being on the show what agencies <laughs> So are you saying you were never signed to an agency? No. Gotcha. I worked, so, I, anytime I've ever modeled, it's been freelance. Freelance, gotcha. Uh, I had an agent really early on, actually. But it was like a really tiny, tiny agency um, that no one's ever heard of, so I won't even say the name. Um, but that was for like a couple months. Gotcha. What was your relationship with Ebony Morgan on the show? Ebony? Um, mm -hmm. Jerome, she did walk in the final runway. She told us earlier. I'm sorry, you're just getting here. Um, I didn't really have a relationship with Ebony. Um, not out of, like, a place of not getting along or anything. She was just really quiet, and I'm really playful and... Mm -hmm. um, there, yeah, there were like a couple people in the house that I just didn't, I didn't have a bad relationship with, but we just weren't. Um, and that was uh, Ebony and Janet and I like didn't really. Excuse me. Oh, I did. I did um, borrow Janet's cuticle um, trimmer and never gave it back. So I'm really sorry about that, Janet. I love you. I'm sorry. Um, that is but funny. There were just like people who I never um, got close with. Um, and Ebony was, was one of them. Um, but we didn't have any problems. I really liked Like, she was a really, really sweet um, person. Um, Soft-spoken. Um, never had a bad thing to say about anyone. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I don't know. If you were in front of Tyra Banks right now, in 2020, what would you say? I know I f I know it feels like I should have some like profound <laughs> I would probably just be like, Hey, how are you? And hope that she didn't see this video. Oh no, mother watches. <laughs> well, then I don't know if I would have the opportunity to say anything to her. <laughs> but I mean <laughs> I would just say hi probably. Yes. Jenna, don't feel no way about it. I mean, the, these these are your feelings based off your experiences, and you're entitled to that. Yeah, like you you didn't say anything bad. You didn't say f anybody. You didn't say they should go to hell. You only spoke about your opinions and your emotions and your feelings about your experiences, and that in itself is a hundred percent valid because that's you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I have obviously complicated feelings towards Tyra. Um, Which is okay, because mother is a complicated person. Yeah. I, I, As we all are. I grew up watching her be a supermodel. Um, I, I, yeah, I really admired her. It was really difficult to go on the show and um, be told some of the things that I was told by her, so that was painful. Um, can't diminish her work and her accomplishments. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I don't. I would just. 
I guess, be really nervous and ask her how she was if I saw her. Well, good, 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 good. Is there anything else you would like to say about Cycle 9 of America's Next Top Model? I don't ever want to say anything else about Cycle 9 of America's Next Top Model. So are you saying this is your official last time? I'm done. Unless it's for charity, and then I'll do it again. Okay. Or oh, unless I start, like, a podcast about reality TV in general, which I've thought about before. I saw your mic in the background when you posted your video, and I was like, oh, she does podcasts. You should do it. You should do it. Actually, that's my husband's, like, work oh. He's a film editor. Oh, nice. Hi, husband. Mm-hmm. He's in the other room watching, for sure. Eee, what's going on? <laughs> Jenna, are, Jenna, are you a housewife? Oh my god, right now I'm a housewife. I'm also a full-time student. And What are you studying? Um, I'm actually applying to get my Master's of Science in Counseling because I want to be a therapist. That is so beautiful. Oh, Jenna, you are warming all of our hearts right now. You are just... Stop. You're just amazing. She already answered the thing about the door. See, you bitches be late to class. And I say I started at two. Dora, the whole Dora thing. I've told you bitches I start. I I start. It's so boring. You have to, I'm really curious. Like, where is that? What place in your heart is that coming from? What's that? Like, someone who, like, says that. Oh, oh, you talking about, well, oh, this isn't me. These are the people down here in the comments. They keep, they keep asking about. No, but that, no, that's what I'm saying. Like them, like who, the people oh. who are saying that, like, why are you, where is that coming from in your heart that you feel like you need to say these mean things? You know. Finger, who, it, by the way, does not meet, need me to defend her because she's an insanely successful person. That bitch is rich, living, living her life. <laughs> she's rich, TV. living her life. She's been on TV. Still on TV. Last time I checked, Rich living her life, just chilling. Yes. And that's you know what. And here's the thing, you know. Now, now that I've y'all gotta let some of that stuff go. Like these people be living their life. They 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 be living their life. You're mad at the wrong person. You're mad at the wrong person. You saw a thing happen that you felt was unjust. Then it was part of a much bigger issue of like exploitation yeah i'm not gonna like give like a whole speech on leftist rhetoric and how i feel like people should get paid for their labor but oh jenna i'm so excited just i'm so glad i'm, I'm following you now because i want to see all these things you oh i'm so excited <laughs> i'm excited like i'm kind of lit right now um i've already asked about the tower thing is there anything else you want to say before I let you go? Because this we're going like an hour and 45 almost. I don't want to hold you too long. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, I, no, I have, I have nothing to say. Um, thanks for hanging out with me in my pajamas. <laughs> yeah. I want you to leave knowing, of course, as you already know, you are one of the most loved contestants from Top Model ever. You are one of the most lauded contestants for turning out amazing photos. Everyone thought you should have won Cycle 9. And I'm pretty sure after today, watching this chat that you and I just had, people will understand you more. And I'm pretty sure more people will fall in love with you as I have. Like, I am just so amazed by the things I've heard today and experiencing you today. I am honored because it was a pleasure. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm going to cry. No, don't cry. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this was um, terrifying. I've definitely said things to you that I have never said in public before. Um, But I feel good. Listen, everybody, follow Jenna right now. Wave to her goodbye. Send her hugs, kisses, love, all the affirmative words that make a bitch feel good (laughs) as we wave goodbye to her for giving an amazing, amazing live about Cycle 9 of America's Next Top Model. Thank you. Love you. Love you, too. Thank you so much. Bye. That was freaking amazing. Listen, I'm not going to stay long um, because it's New Year's and you guys should be with the people that you love. Listen, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you guys so much for making 2020 for me so freaking amazing. 
And I, I'm going to take this time before some of you guys go just to pour a little bit of inspiration and encouraging words in your life. I simply did something that I wanted to do because I was passionate about it and I liked it and it has now grown into this whole thing where all of you guys are joining in and um, people are having great experiences and takeaways from it. And so I'm telling you guys out there, if there's anything that you want to do in this world, don't let anybody, your friends, family, anyone, including yourself and your own inner demon, stop you from doing what you want to do. Um, DM me, talk to me, but get up, get up and just do it. If you believe in yourself, I'm pretty sure there is a bunch of people out there that believe in you as well, because I am a living testament that it can happen. Um, I love you guys so freaking much. This live was so freaking amazing. I am so grateful. Again, thank you guys for making my 2020 amazing. And I look forward to seeing y'all in 2021 because, you know, we can't stop and we won't stop. We can't stop and we won't stop. We got some more stuff to uncover. <sighs> Happy New Year's, guys. Be safe. Listen, it's New Year's. Okay, hold on. Before y'all go, it's New Year's. Now, I know I've been telling y'all to Kegel. I know I've been telling y'all to Kegel, but don't be having y'all hot pussy, hot pussy asses out there doing the things of the things, and then you don't return back to class. I need all of you guys to return back to class on time when I send out the schedule. Make sure you bitches are here. I need to see you in 2020. Hi, Renee! Renee! From Cycle 20. I love you guys. Be safe. Be safe out there. I want to be safe. If you got to stay your ass home, stay your ass home. Like I am, I'm staying home. I'm doing all my bad things in the comfort of my house. So if I go boom crash, I'm going boom crash in the place where I pay the bills at. Listen, I love you guys. Be safe. Be sure to pray and Kegel. And I shall see you bitches in 2021. <laughs> Bye. Come, come home. Ha, 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 ha.